Okay, so continuing in uh, the College Algebra Lecture Series, uh, Section 2.3, talking about graphs, graphing techniques, we're going to talk now about reflections. There's two types of reflections we can talk about. We can talk about reflections about the x-axis or reflections about the y-axis. Um, when you multiply a function by negative 1, right here, so this is minus f of x. So that's like multiplying f of x by negative 1. It actually is a reflection of the original function about the x-axis. So let's say someone said, hey, I need you to graph y equal minus x squared. Okay, well, you know how to graph x squared. And since minus x squared is not just x squared multiplied by negative 1, then this to graph uh, minus x squared, you would just take this function and reflect it about the x-axis. And I'll show you that in just a minute. But let's also talk about this one. Here you have y equals minus absolute value of x. And uh, the mama function for that would have to be absolute value of x and all we're doing is multiplying the absolute value of x here with negative 1 so again you're just gonna we're gonna flip or reflect this graph about the x-axis and that will give me this graph now there's a real simple reason for that um, for instance here let's just talk about this point here when x is 1 here, y would, I mean, sorry, when x is negative 1 here, y would be 1. But for this graph, when x is negative 1, y would be the opposite because of the negative. So, so this point negative 1, where are you at? This point negative 1, 1 would actually become negative 1, negative 1 on the other graph. Now, 0, 0 would still be 0, 0, because negative 1 times 0 is 0. The point 1, 1 would become the point 1, 1, negative 1. Okay? And then you could also talk about the point negative 2, 4 would become the point negative 2, negative 4. The point 2, 4 would become the point 2, negative 4, and so forth. But basically, you're just going to take this thing and let it do a 180 about the x-axis. It's going to do a 180 turn about the x-axis and this is what you get. Okay? That's it. So if you rotated that graph 180 degrees about the x-axis, that's what you would get. Alright? So, so this is the graph of y equals minus x squared. Now the other one was minus absolute value of x. Well, the same thing's going to happen there. This is uh, like, for instance, let's just look at these three points: negative five, 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 and of course zero, zero. Well, basically, this point is going to get moved. Negative five, five is actually going to get moved to where are you at? Don't want to cooperate. Anyway, negative 5, 5 is going to get moved down here to negative 5, negative 5. And then this point 5, 5 is going to get moved down here to 5, negative 5. And then, of course, the 0 is not going to get moved because negative 1 times 0 is still 0. But anyway, if you, move, if, if you were to move all of these points down here and then move all these points down here, then you get the graph of y equals minus the absolute value of x. And that's reflections about the x-axis. Now, reflections about the y-axis, which this is a typo here, reflections about the y-axis occur when you have f replaced with negative x. So if you take a function and you replace x with negative x, then you get a reflection about the y-axis of the original function. So if I were to 
asks, if someone were to say graph y equals the square root of negative x, well, if I know how to graph the square root of x, then I can graph the square root of negative x because all we did to go from this function to this function is we replaced the x here with negative x. And so when you replace x with negative x in a function, it's going to basically give you the same picture, but it's going to be reflected about the y-axis. Okay, here's another one. Here I've got 1 over minus x. Well, its parent function would be the reciprocal function 1 over x. Now, if I were to take this function and replace x with negative x, then I would get this. I would get 1 over negative x, which is, you know, what I have over here, 1 over negative x. And so then, then in order to get the graph of 1 over minus x, I simply take the graph of 1 over x and reflect it about the y-axis. Okay, so this is y equals the square root of x. This is what the graph of y equals square root of x would look like. So if you replace x with negative x, you might remember the domain of this is x must be greater than zero. Well, if I have negative x, that changes the domain. Because negative x, if x was positive, then that would be a negative number. So x itself must be negative values or zero. So for this function, you get that graph. So for y equals square root of negative x, you would get a graph like this. Okay. So you can see that these two functions, the y equals square root of negative x and y equals square root of x, are reflections of one another about the y-axis. Again, there's y equals square root of x, and then here's y equals square root of negative x. And so you just reflect them about the y-axis. Now, this next one is a little bit tricky because... Actually, if I replace um, x with negative x, I do get this function. But guess what? That's the same thing I would get if I just did this. So it would be the same thing if I just multiplied by negative. So what I'm trying to say is, if I replace x with negative x here, then yeah, it's a reflection. It would give me a reflection about the y-axis. But it turns out that sometimes when you reflect something, it's actually a reflection about the y-axis, and it can also be a reflection about the x-axis. Because these two um, functions are actually the same. 1 over negative x and minus 1 over x are the same. And this is, I gain this by replacing x with negative x, and I gain this by multiplying, you know, by negative 1. So, so but, but anyway, let's, let's just take a look. Let's not get lost in that. If you replace x with negative x here, then these two pieces should rotate around the, the uh, y-axis. And there they are, okay? So there's the new pieces. So, again... There's, there's why the blue graph is y equal 1 over x, and then the black graph is 1 over minus x. So 1 over x, 1 over minus x. So anyway, that's... Uh, now what's interesting is, you know, like I said, minus 1 over x is the same. So there's minus 1 over x. And remember, it looked just like that, right? So those are the same. So anyway... And the reason is, is because actually this is a graph that's symmetric with respect to the origin. So if you reflected this graph about the y-axis, you would actually um, get the same graph by reflecting it about the x-axis. A graph that is symmetrical with respect to the y-axis in the first place, when you apply this uh, 
negative x, when you evaluate it negative x, it's not going to change the appearance. So see, this is what y equals absolute value of x looks like. Well, if I take that function and replace x with negative x, well, it's going to rotate this graph around the y-axis. But if you think about it, when you rotate this graph around the y-axis, it's going to be the same shape because, see, this graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis because you've got a mirror image, see. So, so when I rotate it, when I graph this, I get the same graph. So it turns out that actually y equal absolute value of x and y equal minus absolute, I'm sorry, y equal absolute value of minus x actually are the same graph. The last thing I want to talk about here is shrinking and stretching. Um, if you multiply a function by a number that's greater than zero, it gives it a vertical stretch. So it stretches it's like pulling a rubber band up. And if you multiply by a number that's between 0 and 1, like a half or 0.3, it's going to give it a vertical shrink, or it's going to smash it. So if I wanted to graph 4x squared, well, what's going to happen, the y values are going to be the same y values as y equal x squared, except they're multiplied by 4. So if x is 1, you know, y is 1, well, well here, x is 1, y is 4. See, x is 2, y is 4. Well, here, if x is 2, y is 16. So they get multiplied by a factor of 4. Now here, I'm multiplying by a number less than 1, but greater than 0. So if, um, let's say x is 1 here, well, the y is 1. But if x is 1 here, y is a third. If x is 4 here, y is 2. If x is 4 here, y is 2 thirds, and so forth. So it gets shrunk by that factor. Okay, I'm just going to show you this real quick. Here's y equal x squared. Here's y equal 4x squared. So notice that, let me take it away and give it back. Notice how 4x squared is pulled up higher. Yeah, it does make it skinnier, but it's called a vertical stretch. Okay, here's y equal square root of x, and now here's y equal 1 third square root of x. See how it gets smashed down? That's because the one-third is between 0 and 1. Okay? So that's, that's how the vertical stretch and vertical shrink affects the graph. Okay, let's say we want to graph this function. y equals 2 times square root of negative x plus 5. Okay? So basically, ultimately, this is what we want to get to. Well, let's just, let me just walk you through it. So you know how to graph square root of x. And then to get to square root of minus x, you reflect it around the x-axis. Well, now we want to get to 2 times the square root of negative x. So we vertically stretch it. Throw that away. And now we want to get to 2 times the negative square root of negative x plus 5. So we just shift it. We take this graph and shift it up 5 units. And there's the graph. That's basically what you have to do. Just go through those, uh, those steps, and you get your new graph. Okay, let's say we want to graph this one. Minus 1 half, absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2. Well, we know we've got to graph absolute value of x. Then we need absolute value of x minus 3. We're, we're trying to get to here. So we're going to do absolute value of x minus 3, so that's going to shift it to the right. And then we got to multiply it by half, so that's going to vertically shrink it. And then we're going to multiply it by minus 1, so that's just going to shift it around the x-axis. And then the minus 2 is going to move it down two units. And so our final graph would look something like this. And that's how you graph um, using shifts, transformations, and reflections. Okay, to wrap it up, let me just tell you that even functions are symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Odd functions are symmetric with respect to the origin. So if I wanted to look at this function, it's an even function, and this function's an odd function. So if we look at these graphically, then we'll see that that function is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, that function symmetric with respect to the origin, and then this function this is not a function, but it has symmetry with respect to the x-axis.